it was a few weeks ago, uh, Brother Stephan, before they went on vacation, he goes, you know, he said, you don't preach very long. He goes, you preach about 25 minutes. And I looked at him, and I said, are you complaining? <laughs> he said, no, I'm just saying. He goes, I said, well, listen, I don't chase rabbits. He goes, ah, yeah, you don't. I'm, and I'm like, if you want me to chase rabbits, we can extend, you know, the preaching time. I said, but I don't like to chase rabbits. Why? Because, well, I like to get to the point of what God, about, uh, you know, uh, Today, with today's society, especially with teenagers, you get very little time to uh, 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 to keep their attention. And so, uh, Malachi is where we're at tonight. Uh, Gabby, that's the very last book of the Old Testament. If you go to Matthew, go back one book, you'll find Malachi. I'm having a pick on her because her significant other is here. And so, she's, look at you. And uh, so Malachi, uh, chapter 1, and once you found Malachi, I invite you to stand in honor of reading God's word. Malachi, chapter 1, we're going to begin in verse 6. We covered verses uh, 1 through 5 last week, or 1 through 4. Verse 6 says, a, uh, chapter 1, verse 6 says, A son honoreth his father, and a servant his master. If then I be a father, where is mine honor? And if I be a master, where is my fear, saith the Lord of hosts? Unto you, O priests, that despise my name, and ye say, Wherein have we despised thy name? Ye offer pollu polluted bread upon mine altar, and ye say, Wherein have we polluted thee? And that ye say, The table of the Lord is contemptible. And if ye offer the and if ye offer the blind for a sacrifice, is it not evil? And if ye offer the lame and sick, is it not evil? Offer it now unto thy governor. Will he be pleased with thee, or accept thy person? Or accept thy person? Saith the Lord of hosts. And now I pray you, beseech God that he will be gracious unto us. This hath being by your means, will he regard your per your person, saith the Lord of hosts? What they're saying is, there's you're wanting great, you wanting me to accept your wickedness. Verse ten or verse nine and or verse ten. Who is there even among you that would shut the doors for naught? Neither do you kindle fire on mine altar for naught. I have no pleasure in you, saith the Lord of hosts, neither will I accept an offering at your hand. For from the rising of the sun, even unto the going down of the same, my name shall be great among the Gentiles, and in every place incense shall be offered unto my name, and a pure offering for my name shall be great among the heathen, saith the Lord of hosts. But ye have profaned it, in that ye say the table of the Lord is polluted, and the fruit thereof, even his meat, is contemptible. Ye, ye said also, Behold, what a weary, weariness is it. And ye have snuffed at it, saith the Lord of hosts, and ye brought that which was torn, and lame, and the sick, and ye brought an offering. Should I accept this of your hand, saith the Lord? But cursed be the deceiver, or cheater, which hath in his flock a male, and voweth and sacrificeth unto the Lord a corrupt thing. For I am a great king, saith the Lord of hosts, and my name is dreadful among the heathen. Father, as we are to the preaching and the teaching part of the service, Father, I ask that once again you would empty me of myself, Father, that you would cleanse me of my sin, and that you would fill me with thine Holy Ghost, uh, and pr that I may preach, thus saith the word of the Lord. Father, help us this evening to understand, Lord, what you have for us in this book of Malachi. Lord, I know it's tough reading, and just read a casual reading, or we won't get what you have. 
So, Father, I pray that we would all stay focused, that we would all pay attention this evening to the preaching of your word. Father, I ask you to do all these things in Christ's name. Amen. Thank you. You may be seated. I ask God to bless the reading of his word. I don't know if you've, if you've realized over the last few months with the election, there's been a lot of lawsuits filed, both against um, the machines uh, that they used and the company that has the machines has filed lawsuits on others. And... Not only that, there's been some in indictments uh, over the, the last year, but in the last few years, politically. And one thing, especially with lawsuits, just because a lawsuit is filed does not mean the one who is filing, the, the one who the lawsuit is against is wrong. Right? Not only this, but the indictments. Just because someone is indicted for something doesn't mean they're guilty. But I will say this. When God indicts, you're guilty. With man, and our court system is as, may I say, as polluted and as compromised as it has, as it has become, just because you're indicted or a lawsuit has been filed does not mean you're guilty. I know and you say you're, everyone is innocent until proven guilty. Now uh, society has proven you guilty before anything has ever taken place. But I want to speak to you tonight on polluted priests. That's the title of the message, Polluted Priests. We're going to discuss some... We're going to continue to discuss indictments that God has made upon Israel. Uh, and tonight we're going to be talking about some indictments. The first indictment that we talked about uh, in verses 1 through 5 is, uh, is this. God's first indictment is that they didn't recognize God's love for them. We discussed how that he chose them, how he showed that he loved them by choosing them. We talked about how there was nothing uh, with them as a, as a people group that set them apart from any other people group, right? We've discussed this. There's no difference between them and any other people group uh, in the world, but God chose them, and he showed that he, cho he, he loved them by choosing them. And not only that, but we see tonight he talks about the second indictment, is that they dishonor God. He's indicted them, and they're guilty with this indictment that they have dishonored God. We look at verses 6 through 14. This is what it's talking about. He is showing them that in uh, not only the priests dishonor God with their service, but the people in the, in the polluted animals that they are offering have dishonored God. And so, but even though... Uh, here, he's addressing the, the priest here. He's lumping them all together. And so, they dishonored God. They dishonored God because, look, listen, I want you to pay attention. They dishonored God because they were willing to modify God's requirements by their circumstances. They were dishonoring God by modifying God's requirements because of their circumstances. Now, I'm going to get to the end of the message, but what, I'm, what, what that means is God, in Leviticus, we're going to talk about this, told them what they could and could not offer. Not only did he tell them what they could and could not offer, he made provisions for the wealthy and for the poor. Remember, we talk, remember uh, if you go to your, in your Bible reading, he says, even the poor, they can offer grain and birds, right? It, it, it didn't matter. Listen, God was more interested in the person than the offering. But God did give them some requirements. And so they hear the people group. We're talking, uh, you know, years after they have come back from, 
being under uh, Babylon. They're, the priests are doing, supposed to be doing their temple duties, but yet uh, they are modifying his requirements. They're not offering God what he has required, and they're saying, well, my circumstance is this, and since my circumstance is this, I'm going to give you subpar offerings. And let me, let me help you out. We do this every single time. Every single day. Believers today, uh, they let their circumstances dictate what they, want, what they offer God. Instead of seeing what God's requirements are and giving God his requirements, we give him subpar service. Thank you, Brother Priest. And this is what the people were, the priests were doing. They were all, they were accepting subpar sacrifices. And since they were accepting subpar sacrifices, what do you think the people were giving? Well, if the leadership is going to accept subpar sacrifice, well, guess what? I'm not giving my best. Hello. And so they were dishonoring God by modifying. Their offerings or God's requirements by their circumstances. The priests were guilty of this. They were not just despising. They were guilty uh, of this, but they were the priests were guilty of despising God. They've dishonored Him in two different ways in this chapter. First, the first way they've dishonored Him is they dishonored Him relationally by not recognizing him as a, as their father and verse 6 it says a son honoreth his what father so the very uh, he asked them if if I, if then I be a father where is my what honor so they've dishonored him relationally because they are not honoring god as their father. I mean, in the book of Hosea, God tells them, when Israel was a child, then I loved him and called him my son out of Egypt. God said that Israel was his son, and he says, I've loved them, and I've called them, I called my son out of Egypt. They've dishonored God relationally because they do not honor him as a father. And if you look uh, at Israel's history, the more God called them, the more they fled. The more God called on them to do things, the more Israel fled. They've dishonored him relationally, and they've dishonored him reverentially. That's a word. Rever uh, reverentially. What do you mean by that? Well, they did not recognize him as master or creator. Verse 6, he says, and a, serv uh, uh, and a servant his master. If I be a master, where is my fear? So they dishonored God relationally because they, uh, they didn't recognize him as their father and they dishonored him as, uh, as uh, a master reverently. They did not reverent him because there was no fear. I mean, let me tell you, we've, uh, there ought to be fear in a believer's life towards God, right? But you know what happens? What we've gotten so used to as believers? God's grace. There is no fear or reverence for God anymore in a lot of believers' life because I'm under grace. Show me in the Bible where you don't have to pay for your disobedience. Show me in the Bible where God's going to give you grace and not make you pay for those consequences, give you consequences for your decisions. If God chooses to show you grace because he says I will have mercy upon who I have mercy is his choice. Now, I, I can tell you I have had grace where in my disobedience, but did I deserve consequences? Yes, I did. Yes, I do. And so here, they've, Israel has dishonored God. 
They were not showing reverence to him. And then they asked. He, he indicted them and they challenged him. They challenge him and, and, and they say, uh, uh, and he says, O priest, and despise my name. He goes and despise my name. And they say, And ye say, Wherein have we despised thy name? The priests say, Where? Show me where you have, where we have despised you. Kind of like a teenager getting in trouble. When did I do that? You know, this is what happens. The priests are saying, Show me. Show me where I've despised you, God. So God is going to get into the particulars, and God presents the evidence against them of his indictments. Verse 8, we'll see uh, pieces of evidence. He, look at verse 8. He says, And if ye offer the blind... For sacrifice, is it not evil? And if you offer the lame and sick, is it not evil? He goes, you want evidence? Here it is. You bring me blind, lame, and sick animals to offer and expect God to be gracious to you. Verse 9, it's what he says. And now I pray you beseech God that he will be gracious unto us. He says, you're bringing me uh, polluted sacrifices and expect me to be gracious to you. That's not how God works. What were they supposed to bring? They were to bring the best because God is worthy of the best. God is worthy of the very best that we have to offer, and that God is, the, is worth the very best that Israel has to offer. If we go back to Leviticus 22, we're going to be, if they were polluted, if they were to offer polluted animal to their governor, God says, would he be pleased with it? The thing is, is I mean, let me ask you this. Would your boss be satisfied or be happy with the service you have towards your boss that you and I serve to God? Hello? Some of us, we treat our boss higher than we treat our God. We give our boss 100%. No matter what, we even, not only that, but we'll stay after and do extra and volunteer to do this, volunteer to do that. But when it comes to our service to God, it is nil and void. And we'll say, well, because of my boss and me having to do this, I can't do this. We are offering God subpar service. And this is what Israel, he, God says, listen, would you give your governor, the, those that are in authority over you, would you give them this subpar trash? But yet, he's saying, you're giving me this. God deserves the best. Does he not? He deserves the best of me. He deserves the best of his church. From, he deserves the best from his church. Let's turn to Leviticus chapter 22. Leviticus 22. See, they knew what they were supposed to offer. Yeah, I mean, that's Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, the third book of the Old Testament. Genesis chapter 22. We're going to begin in verse 18. Let's look at verse 17. It says, And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Verse 18, Speak unto Aaron and to his sons and to all the children of Israel, not just the priests, but all the children of Israel, and say unto them, Whatsoever he be of the house of Israel or of the strangers or anybody else in Israel that will offer his oblation or his sacrifice for all his vows, and for all his free will offerings, which they will offer unto the Lord for a burnt offering, ye shall offer at your own will a male, look at this, without blemish of the beeves of the sheep or of the goats. But whatsoever hath a blemish, that shall ye not offer, for it shall not be, what's that word? Acceptable 
for you, and whatsoever all, or and whosoever offereth a sacrifice uh, of a peace of peace offerings unto the Lord to accomplish his vow, or to accomplish his vow, or a free will offering in beeves or sheep, it shall be perfect. To be accepted, there shall be no blemish therein, blind or broken or maimed or having a wind or scurvy or scab. Ye shall not offer these unto the Lord, nor make an offering by fire of them upon the altar unto the Lord, uh, either a bullock or, or a lamb that hath anything superfluous or lacking in his parts, that mayest thou offer for a Free will offering, but for a vow it shall not be accepted. Ye shall not offer unto the Lord that which is bruised or crushed or broken, which is bru or broken or cut. Neither shall ye make any offering thereof in your land. Neither from a stranger's hand shall ye offer the bread of your God of any of these, because their corruption is in them, and blemishes be in them, they shall not be accepted for you. And the Lord spake unto Moses, and it continues. So the, they, uh, they, they knew what they were to offer, but they did not, and God deserves the best. Why did God say they had to be no blemish? Why did God say it had to be perfect? Because it was to show, the, uh, define God's holiness. They were to bring whole, perfect, no blemish offerings. One, because God deserved it, but two, it shows his holiness over them. They knew from the, the book of uh, the, the, the law of Moses that, that one, the priests are not to accept anything subpar. And two, the people, as you saw there in verse, 20, uh, in verse 22, he says, speak to the priests and to the people. We are, as believers, we don't have to report to a priest for anything. Why? Because we are all priests. We can all go before, to, before the throne room of God, can we not? So as believers, we, are, we have no excuse of giving God subpar service, subpar offerings, anything subpar. Now let me tell you something. When I was studying for this, this hit me as a ton of bricks, and I'm hoping the Holy Spirit opens the mind of some, and the heart of some of us in here and listening online that they can... That they will understand that it is unacceptable for us as believers to deal with God the way we have dealt with him in the past. It's unacceptable. Well, Brother Mark, this is Old Testament. Well, Jesus was the perfect sacrifice. Jesus, if you, you notice when Jesus talked to the Pharisees or into, to any lawyer, he just didn't say about adultery, about physically how, uh, going and having a, a physical or sexual relationship with someone outside of marriage. He says, he, Jesus took it a step further, did he not? He says, if you lust after a woman in your own heart, you've committed what? Adultery. So don't tell me that, that you, we get to use the excuse that this is the Old Testament, so we get to do with, deal with God the way... No, 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 no. Jesus took, it a, took everything further than he needed to. People, they, they knew what they were to offer. You bring, he says, you bring animals that have been... Got, not only that, he goes, you've been given... You've been giving animals... They have gotten by ill-gotten gain or stolen or injured. That's what when he, he tells it uh, in verse 13. He goes, he also uh, you, uh, you said also, Behold, what a weariness it is, is it, and ye have snuffed at it, saith the Lord of hosts, and ye brought that which is torn and lame and the sick. Thus ye brought an offering. Talking about torn, saying that you've gotten them from uh, ill-gotten, whether you stole them or whether they got you gotten them because uh, somebody owed you something. That's not what you're supposed to do. 
Listen, he's addressing the priest, but there's no difference between the priest and the people because both groups of people have had have low standing or a low standard of God. He's he, he's addressing the priest, but both of these the people who are off who are bringing this subpar this these polluted animals and the priests that are accepting them, they're both no different from one another because they have low standing of God. The polluted ta- they're saying what is the, the polluted tables is a reflection of the polluted priests. That's what we see here, that the polluted tables are a reflection of the polluted priests. They viewed their approach to God as, a, as common, so there is nothing holy about the altar, therefore their offerings reflect their attitude towards God. Look at verse 12. This discusses it. He goes, But ye have profaned it, in that ye say, The table of the Lord is polluted, and the fruit thereof, even his meat, is contemptible. See, the problem is that they have is they're viewing the altar of God as not important nor holy. And so since their view of the altar is not important and not holy, what we offer on there, it doesn't really matter. God says, oh, time out. My altar is what? Holy. His altar is holy. Not only is the altar holy, but what you sacrifice. It's supposed to be the same, supposed to be the same. So their attitude towards the table and the offerings reflects their attitude of their heart to God. So if we as believers offer God sub par a polluted service, what does that say about your or my attitude to God? That right there should cause people to rush to an altar. Should it not? Because if we're going to, if we think it's okay to offer God sub polluted offerings or not what God has required, but because of our circumstances, we say, God, this is my circumstance, so I can't give you what you required, but I'm going to give you this. You know, it tells you you have a very low standing or st- uh, you. You have a very low idea of who God is. You know those who have, has that kind of an idea of who God is? Lost and backsliders. Listen, believers, our God is, we're supposed to have the highest view of God. He is holy. And so... We see the, ad, the reason they keep, they're offering this and the reason the people are, uh, are giving these to offer is because of the way they see God. It's not a big deal to them. It, they weren't bothered to offer this. Not only were they not bothered to do this, but the priests themselves were bothered to do their service. It bothered them to do their priestly duties. They would dedicate the beast, but when it came down to it, they were willing to modify God's requirements by their circumstances. That's what he says in verse 14. But it, he goes, But cursed be the deceiver or the, or the cheat which hath in his flock a male and voweth to sacrifice unto the Lord, a corrupt thing. What you, let me give you in a nutshell, or in our modern day vernacular, what that means. God, I'm going to give you 10% of my income. I'm vowing I'm going to give you my tithe. But when Sunday comes, don't have it, Lord, I'll give you 20 that's what verse 14 means. You're vowing the best, what I require, but you give me a profane thing. Ouch. Ouch. For God, I, listen, 
you, 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 told me, you, you gave me the great commission. You gave the church a great commission. We're supposed to go out and share the gospel. But listen, when it comes down to it, when it, I, I've already made plans to do this or to do that. He says, you're not to vow some, what God requires and then give him a profane thing. He, what does he say? I am a what? Great king. God is a great king. He deserves our best. And it behooves you and me to give him our best. Too often, folks volunteer the best to God. May have great intentions, but sin against God in the way they execute it. Too often, believers volunteer or vow the best to God but sin against the way they execute it. Why do we do this? Why do folks of vow say, I'm going to do this? They pray and they seek God. They get it in their heart. Why do they do this? Why do they vow and, and, and plan to give God's best, but when they end up sinning against God because they, they, they don't execute what they vowed? The reason is because they're spiritual liars, spiritual hypocrites, and spiritual cheats. Spiritual liars, spiritual hypocrites, spiritual cheats. Why do people do this? It's because of their low view of God. They want people to think that they're one type of person, but in reality, they're worse. I'll pray for you. I'll do that. I'll be there. I'll do this. You know, we have a New Testament example of this in Acts chapter 5, Ananias and Sapphira. They vowed. They sold their land. They come to the, they come to the disciples and they said, and Ananias first, and not only did they sell their land, they both agreed to give uh, the church this amount. But instead, you know, they vowed to give this amount and, and tell the church, well, this is what we got it for, so here it is. And Ananias went in and said, listen, we've sold our land. This is what we got for it. Here it is. Peter said, why have you lied to the Holy Spirit? And what happened to Ananias? Drop dead. And Sapphira come later, not even knowing what happened to Ananias. What did Peter say? Did, is this the amount that you got for your land? What did Sapphira say? Drop dead. So the, same, the feet of the same people who took, pull, who brought, who, uh, took your husband out is going to take you out. She dropped dead. And why we try to pull the wool over God's eyes is beyond me. Every time we do this, we deserve what Ananias and Sapphira got every single time. We don't deserve God's grace to. We don't. We don't deserve the punishment. Look at verse ten. He said, "Who is there even among you that would shut the doors?" For not, neither do you kindle fire on the altar for not. Because I have no pleasure in you, saith the Lord of hosts. Neither will I accept an offering at your hand. God says he would rather, he, God here in verse 10 says he would rather folks say and do nothing than to profane him. That's what he says in verse 10. He goes, I would rather you do nothing than to profane me. In verse 10. 
think he says that also to the church of Laodicea, doesn't he? In Revelation chapter 3, he goes, I'd rather you be hot or cold. But because you're lukewarm, I'm spew you out. See, the problem's not with God. The problem's with them. The problem is not God. It's with us. If anything should change your service to God, it should be this message. Doesn't matter if it's Old Testament. It's still His Word. God deserves our very best. And to give Him anything less in the old 1990 commercials, anything else would be uncivilized, right? Anything less is not acceptable. It's not acceptable. Father, as we conclude this evening, I myself am guilty of Israel here is challenging you. Lord, you've indicted Israel. They are guilty. Father, I am guilty. Lord, I know you don't accept polluted offerings. Nor do you accept subpar service. Father, you deserve the very best from me. Lord, you deserve the very best from each member of the Garth Road Baptist Church. And you deserve the very best of every, from every child of God, uh, every one of your children. Lord, I pray this evening, Lord, that you have spoken to your people through the preaching of your word this evening. Father, may your people respond. May you have your will and your ways this evening. Thank you for your word. Thank you for your warning. I ask you to do all these things in Christ's name. Amen. Let's stand.